Hey, this is, it's gonna be a little bit different. Yes, I'm still Joel, and yes, I still go by the 3D Printing Nerd here on YouTube, but I'm going to do a laser video. I've recently acquired a full spectrum Muse laser cutter, and it's awesome. And I had a cool experience today, and I had the chance to use it for some good. And I thought other people might like to hear about this and learn how I did it. So let's get into it. First, I want to make you aware of Becca's Brew. Becca's Brew is a little coffee shack in an AM PM Arco parking lot in Bothell, Washington. I am close enough and I had to take my son to a birthday party and I had to pass by this place. And the reason I know about this place is because Como here in Seattle did a showcase on Becca's Brew and Will, a nice person that stops by the coffee stand and, uh, and keeps Becca company and helps out. And it's just, it's a wonderful story. I'm gonna put the link down in the description. Please visit Becca's Brew on Facebook. Please leave a good comment. Please watch the video. Uh, but if you notice Becca's Brew, there's a, uh, there's a picture here. And that picture itself, uh, it's, it's got Becca's Brew and it's got like a logo. And I thought maybe, maybe I could laser cut this into some acrylic. I looked around and I couldn't find the actual logo in a file. So I thought I could use Photoshop. I could use Photoshop and extract this from the card and then bring it into Illustrator to trace it into vectors and then send it to the Muse to etch and cut out of acrylic. That's the plan. I had 30 minutes to do all this before today and it actually worked out so I know it's possible, but here's how I did it. First, what I did is brought the image into Photoshop and here you can see it's, well, it's, it's just right here. I'm gonna marquee around it and then I'm gonna go image and then I'm gonna crop because this is what, this is what I'm dealing with. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna double click this here because it's a locked background and then I'm gonna hit okay and that unlocks it. I'm gonna go edit, I'm gonna go transform and perspective. And if you look, it's, it's kind of uh, a little bit away from the camera. Actually, before I do perspective, how about I do a control T and I rotate it. This should give you a better idea. So you can see that the card is essentially being uh, from left to right, slowly going away from the camera. So I'll do this transform. I'll do the perspective. And now what I can do is grab these corners and I can bring that back in. And that looks pretty good right there. Again, I'm just eyeballing things. That's all we're doing. I'm going to marquee again and I'm going to trace right around here because we don't need the blackness of the card. All we need are the letters. And I think uh, that's the part we need to remember. Okay, this is good. What I'm going to do, uh, well, shoot. One of the B's is obscured, but it looks like in this font we have another B, so I'm going to draw around this B here with my mouse, and I'm a terrible drawer, apparently. Okay, I'm going to hit Control J to jump that to a new layer, and I'm going to hit V to get back to my cursor, and I'm going to bring it over. Okay, here's something you can do. You can right-click on the layer, go Blending Options, and you can reduce its opacity to 50%. That way you can kind of see what's what. Uh, here we go. And it looks like we are so close. So close. That looks perfect, actually. Perfect. Good job, everybody. Good job. So now what I can do is hit the right mouse button, go blending options, and bring it back to 100% opacity. Looks like that. And then if I remove that to get rid of this thumb, because we don't really need it, I'm going to get the pen or the, um, uh, the ink dropper, picker upper thingy. God, I can't remember the name for that. I'm gonna go with this, this paintbrush on this layer. And I'm just gonna paint over the thumb a bit. And it, don't worry about that B, because remember, it's right there. So we just need to make sure we get all of the white specks out, because what we're gonna do is a selection by color. There we go, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna click here and I'm going to go image, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go layer, merge down. It's now one image. And so now what I can do is, and there's probably other ways to do this, but I'm gonna do select color range. See how highlights, make sure you select highlights here. Okay, so everything that's not red is going to be selected. 
That looks good. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit J, Control J to jump that to a new layer. I'm going to uncheck the eyeball on this. One of the things that you want to do before you export it as a PNG is you right click on this layer, go Blending Options, Color Overlay, and choose Black. So it looks like that. There we go. Then you can go Export it as a PNG, and then open it in Adobe Illustrator, and it'll look like that. Now what I'm going to do is Image Trace. I'm going to hit this button. And then it looks like that, and it's vectors. And I can do uh, some, some different presets. And if I go down here, there's a line art. And it looks like that. That looks hip and cool. I like that a lot. So now what I'm going to do is export that as another PNG. I'm going to call it Becca's Brews for Laser. And I will hit export. Just hit OK. And that's it. So now what we need to do is bring up the laser software, which is called Retina Engrave 3D. Now that the laser is turned on, I've put acrylic into it and I've captured the workspace with the camera. I've taken a height measurement and I've already focused the laser using the little focusing widget. Uh, that's not going to be covered in this video. Of course, I'll cover that in another video, but let's dive into Retina Engrave. So within Retina Engrave, what you want to do is click this pencil looking thing up here. So you want to go File, Import Image, and you're going to choose Becca's Brews for Laser. I know it's actually Becca's Brew. I just put the S on there because, well, I forgot. There it is. Awesome. I'm now going to hit Export to Retina Engrave, and that's going to take it from its little drawing program over to the software that actually lasers stuff. And you have the vector, and you have the uh, raster and the vector there's bugs in this software so the vector doesn't really work you gotta just get rid of that here's our raster it looks pretty good but we're, we're not done quite yet let's go back into the pencil see we see this now what we need to do is draw a square ish rectangle ish thing around it and then in roundness we're just gonna start to move that up a little bit and that rounds the corners now we're gonna hit export to retina engrave again once it's there, you're going to see this dark rectangle. Of course, that's the raster. If you turn that off, you see it goes away. But the vector itself is right here. So let's position it somewhere on the acrylic. And then let's go with the Becca's Brew and position that within our rectangle. Let's see if things will fit. I think th things will fit just fine. There we go. You can sort of see that outline there around Becca's Brew. So now let's get to the parts that we need to cut and the parts that we need to laser engrave. So let's put uh, the vector first. Vectors are cuts, rasters are engraves. So with the vector, I know that uh, it's this dark black setting here. I know I'm gonna need, uh, I think it's two passes at 30% speed. And then for the raster, here's what I want to do. I want um, raster power will go to 65%. I just type it in there, 65. And for the resolution, we'll do 500 by 500 DPI. So the black and white threshold at 225, that's just to decide what's, what's actually engraved and what isn't. Leaving it at 225 is just fine. All right, so we've got our Becca's Brew here. We've got the cut line here and the vectors. Now we just need to send it to the laser. the laser is done. It actually ended up taking three passes at 30% speed in order to get through the acrylic. Uh, also, it I, I believe you should probably do the raster pass before you do the vector pass. At least that's what I've learned. 
So it looks like this, but I'm not done. So what I wanna do, here's the lasered side. On the back side, I wanna run some sandpaper on it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to cloud up. I wanna cloud up the back side. It will help disperse the light and it'll just give it a cool look. And I'm not using any sort of special sandpaper here. I'm just using some typical, uh, I think it's 400 grit. This is the stuff that Bill brought over from uh, Bill from Punish Props. <laughs> so thanks for loading me some sandpaper, Bill. I hear, uh, I hear you like to sand things. All right. <sighs> Don't breathe that. All right, I'm gonna use a paper towel to wipe it off. And here we go. That's it. Not too shabby. I think you guys can see that. This is actually an old build plate from my old G-Max 1.5 XT printer. I have plenty of acrylic from that because I had a few different build plates and so it just made sense to make something awesome. So now what do you do? Well, at this point, I, I took this over to Becca and I gave it to her as a thank you for some awesome coffee and as a thanks for being a, a really awesome person in the community. But for you, what you could do next, if you wanted to further personalize this, you could go into some 3D modeling software like Fusion 360 or Tinkercad and model up a base to put this in. You could also go to adafruit.com and get yourself some LEDs and a plug-in and a controller and embed that within the base to project light through the acrylic to light this up. And finally, what a laser cutter does is it etches into the acrylic and what you could do at this point is get your favorite color of acrylic paint and rub it in to the, uh, to the indents where it carved out Becca's bruise and then wipe it away from the top, leaving the color embedded in the trenches. And then when you put the light from, uh, from underneath, it might look kind of cool. I don't know. That's the wonderful thing about making and repurposing. Uh, this was an old build plate and I just made something really cool that someone really enjoyed getting as a gift. So I hope this inspires you and I hope, uh, I hope this is a sign of things to come on this channel. More repurposing, more making, more doing, more wonderful stuff like that. Well, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out Becca's Brew. I'd love for you to visit the link in the description. Maybe leave some words of encouragement. At least watch the video about, uh, I think it's called Eric's Heroes uh, from Como TV4 here in Seattle. Uh, a big thanks to everybody uh, who, who watches. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. Uh, a big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com and a big thanks to everybody who lets the ads play. That helps the channel a lot. Don't worry if you're on YouTube Red, I still get paid from that too. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.